Yeah, so electrification, Andy, that's a big deal right now. Yeah. I mean, it's really the, the term everyone's talking about. Mm. And, uh, and essentially what that means is letting go of gas and just having your entire home be powered by nothing but electricity. I thought it meant um, capital punishment. <laughs> Well, that, I suppose that's comp a component to it, right? Yeah. And uh, every, every home with kids should have some sort of capital punishment uh, <laughs> yes. when they misbehave. But really, it's ensuring that everything in your home can be powered by electricity. Yep. And unfortunately, when you're considering that as a scenario, especially with the rising cost of electricity, it's imperative to have as much renewable energy technology installed in that, in that home as possible. Mm. Yeah, so like having the largest solar power system on your roof as possible is certainly the first step. But unfortunately, like in this scenario, you and I are out working today, the sun's shining, it's a beautiful day, but we're not at home to use that electricity. And uh, that's when you then have to consider, well, what do you do with that excess electricity? It's, it's no longer worthwhile to sell it back into the electricity grid because you get paid such a small amount of money yep. for that excess electricity. So it's then a case of, you know, looking at, well, the next logical step is to incorporate battery technology. So the home I want to take you to today is, in my opinion, like almost a future home. It has a huge whopping 38 kilowatt solar system on the roof. Wow. But on top of that, it has around 24 kilowatt hours of battery storage. All right, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's a beautiful home. You're going to love the home itself. It uh, certainly ticks all the boxes that you and Deb would love to find really appealing yep. in terms of renovating such a property. But from my perspective, it has all the latest tech, solar power system, battery storage, and it even has an EV charge-up for this, uh, for this wow. bad boy here. Okay, well look, I, I know I act uh, dumb when it comes to all of this stuff, but the fact is I do it for comedy, but I am very excited about technology and what new technology is coming about. Um, so yeah, I'm pumped to see it. No, fantastic. Well look, uh, you know, this car here, thank you very much to Melbourne BMW for providing this beautiful i7. Mm. But once again, when you have an electric vehicle such as this one, or you know, any electric vehicle, you know, it's, it's not often you're going to be parking that vehicle during the daytime when the solar power is actually working. Mm. It's going to be in the evening. So that's when battery storage once again comes into its own. Because rather than buying electricity from the grid, you're actually going to be buying it, or you're going to be using it for what you've stored throughout the daytime to be used at night time. Chantel, thanks for inviting us here to your beautiful home. It's absolutely gorgeous. On this gorgeous day in this beautiful part of Gisborne, <laughs> uh, I am so impressed, but what is that? This is our home energy system. Yep. So this allows us to be sustainable and also keep our running costs down. So we've got our inverters and our switchboard to the far right. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our battery stacks, which power us at night and in the event of blackouts. And then, more recently, we've added in our car charger, which helps us drive from the sun. Amazing, so you've got an electric car. I do, yes. What? Love Chantel, it. we've literally just driven in the most beautiful car on the way here, but when I saw your solar power system from the roof, I was absolutely flabbergasted. <laughs> it's huge. How big a system do you have? It is 35 kilowatts. That's oh huge. Oh my God. Chantal, I'm so impressed. You have the latest and greatest technology from Fronius in your home. I mean, you must be super chuffed with what you've done with, with this installation. Oh, look, we love it. And being able to add the car charger on and have it all in the one ecosystem has been amazing. How much battery storage do you actually have? Uh, 44 kilowatt hours. That's which is yeah, it's big. It's big. <laughs> um, we've got a young family though, um, and being able to run the dryer and the dishwasher in the evening when it's convenient for us so that we can get to it first thing in the morning and get to work, it's just a life changer. And you've actually got Fronius's latest inverter as well, as well as their Gen 24 Plus, which means you can actually function your home irrespective of there being a blackout. Yeah, and look, it does happen around here. Um, and as you'll see soon, we have a fish tank and it's really important that we don't lose the power for the fish. We've got to keep that powered. So the backup power was really important to us. I love Fronius, a lot of my clients do too. But why did you specifically pick them? Oh, look, if you do any research, you'll find that Fronius is the best. It's, you know, undeniable when it comes to researching solar. And because it's made in Austria, they gave me a lot of peace of mind regarding the quality. 
So Chantel, uh, coming from my family, if we ever wanted to transition into using, like having this at our own home, uh, is it an easy transition? What, what, what would we have to do to, um, to get to this level? Maybe not to this level, <laughs> but maybe just coming from, you know, a standard way of using electricity to this. I think it's a lot easier than people expect. You know, it's about putting the right pieces to place and finding the right solution for you. Mm. Everybody's different. This size system was right for what our family wanted. Um, and if you find the right solution that matches what you need and what you expect from a solar or energy solution, it's not, it's not really that hard. You know, one step is the solar system. You know, step two can be batteries and step three can be chargers. It doesn't need to be all in one go. Yeah. And that's part of the beauty of the Proteus is that you can add on as you go and just build on the ecosystem. It's not an all or nothing situation. I'm thinking of cost. I'm like any normal dad, uh, I am thinking of cost. What would it cost? Um, like give us, a, give us a range of what I'm, what I'm going to have to spend or my wife and I are going to have to spend. Oh, it definitely depends on the quality and the size that you choose and it can be expanded on over time. You know, in my experience, people spend anywhere from 10,000 on solar, you know, all up to 100,000 for wow. a full home energy system. But it should be becoming part of a home appliance, the same yeah. way we put heating and cooling in. If we're ever going to get towards net zero, we've got to be thinking about a home energy system as part of every new build and as part of every home. And rather than just be thinking of it as an add-on, it should be baked into the design in the first place. How long does it take to charge your car each evening with your EV charger? Uh, so it depends how far I drive. So most of the time I drive between Gisborne and Sunbury. And depending on how I drive, it usually uses about 5 to 10% uh, between Gisborne and Sunbury. For me to charge that up would sort of be within an hour um, to charge up. If I wanted to fully charge, um, it would take 6 to 7 hours. Wow. But it's rare that I let it get down that low. Um, I'm, look, I'm very much a 0% phone person, so if you find a device of mine, there's a good chance it's only got a few percent on it, but I am married to someone on the other end of the spectrum, so if I don't plug it in, my husband will have it plugged in before I even know it. It must be so reassuring as well, coming home in the evening and knowing that you have got your EV charger for a start, but secondly, you've got some new batteries. No matter what happens, yeah. you're definitely going to be able to charge that car up over that evening. Yeah, well, when I drive to and from work and to pick the kids up, I know that I'm driving completely powered by the sun. And the Fronius Watt Pilot has an eco mode that I can set it, for example, if I'm working from home, which I do sometimes, so that it only charges from the solar power, so that it doesn't take anything from the grid. So if you wanted to, you can have a system set up so that your, your car charges exclusively from solar. How are you able to visualise that? Is there an application that you can go to? There, there's a Fronius Watt Pilot app and there's also the Fronius Solar Web app that shows me everything that happens here in one ecosystem in a couple of different colours on the graph. So good to see you today, mate. What an amazing installation you guys have performed over here. Thanks again for having us, and I have no words for this installation. I always try to show this uh, side to everyone I meet, mean, 100%. I was blown away when we said to you that we need the perfect time to showcase your technology. I was not expecting this. It literally is a Ferronius museum. I think I'm gonna move here. You know, I want to have my office in this garage now, that's my plan. I do not blame you. Know, for anyone watching this today who doesn't know what we know about solar technology, just talk through the process. I mean, they've got a 35 kilowatt system on the roof. Tell us about the inverters that you've used for this particular installation. Yeah, so basically for the residential side, it's a three-phase home. Most houses in Australia will be a single phase, that's what we commonly see, but most guys went for a big, really big system. So they have around 38 kilowatt on the roof, so we have two Simo uh, here. This was basically some of our older models, we still bring them in the country, but also we wanted batteries. And when it comes back to batteries, we added our new Simo Gen 24, so this is our new baby, which are connected to those two big stuff there, right? So what do we wanted to do is make sure that those two batteries are full all, all the time, so we have PV connected to this one, yeah. and PV connected to those two. So is it, how much PV is connected to each individual inverter? Is that the way it works? Yes, so 
it will be split around equally the same amount, right? Yeah. So what what is the beauty of having this in Venice? Of course, you can take energy from the PD which is connected to this one, but also at the same time taking energy from those two and can charge the battery. So it's something a bit unique with the way that we charge our batteries. So it's more efficient in a way. That's absolutely fantastic. And what I love about your technology is that safeguard knowing that if there is a blackout, you know the home will still be working and you can still power it using the technology and also drawing down from the batteries as well if in case you need it to. Yes, that's correct. So of course here you have a battery, but this baby here can do it with or without a battery. So you have those two options. So people can buy, uh, we call it the Samuel Gen 24 uh, Plus, which yes. you can connect the battery to it. And then we have also a Gen 24 on a single phase where you can have up to three kilowatts in back of mode without any battery. Which is absolutely fantastic. So I remember back in the day when there was a blackout, the whole system had a kill switch and that was the end of it. So people would say to us, hang on a second, I've got a solar power system on my roof. You know, surely it should be able to still function and unfortunately it couldn't do. But you guys have really introduced some incredible technology to safeguard exactly that. Exactly. So we got the feedback from the market and a lot of people selling the product, how to go in, explain to the customer and it's a technical product, right? So going into the nitty gritty, we said, no, let's make it simple. Whatever the people wanted to have, let's provide that to them. That's absolutely brilliant, man. And what we're loving is your battery stack as well. So the fact you've created such a small modular battery is phenomenal. Tell us about the process in terms of coming up with that technology. Well, the battery are made by BYD, so it is a partnership that we have closely with them. And BYD is one of the biggest battery manufacturers in the world. You can see that they are bringing the car. The concept is very interesting, but again, they took feedback from the market. Instead of having multiple people coming and installing one big battery, making it easier in terms of safety on site, but also giving options to the customer. For us and them, it's all about flexibility. You don't want to pay for something that you're not using, right? So we need to make sure that we size the battery accordingly to their needs. Which is absolutely amazing because what you can fundamentally load your roof up with as many panels as possible then once you get that electricity bill through and you can actually see how much we're actually consuming throughout the daytime and how much you're selling back into the grid then you can just start to build up your batteries exactly and also we have a software to help the end user as we see it's, it is a technical product right so we want to make their life or the journey to the sustainability path the easiest that we can do so if you have a first inverter you have a first smart meter jump on the app and you can size different batteries to see how independent you can be from the grid. That's amazing. And your technology, your software, will actually let you control how the electricity flows you know, between individual units and you know, how much of the battery is used or um, discharged, does it do all that sort of stuff? Yes, you, you will be able, because I won't go into the technical <laughs> nitty gritty here, but you will be able to do something like that. Maybe a better way to, to look at the overall ecosystem. Let's say you have a car charger, yes. you have a battery, you have all those inverters, you want to make sure that you have the most efficient way or the better saving that you can do, right? So our software takes care of this and you don't need to worry about it. If you want to change it, it is also possible. That's so fantastic. Flexibility. And I love that back to page technology, especially yours, because really everyone loves their smartphones or their iPads and they want to be able to see it, right? And unfortunately, the panels on the roof, no, your inverters are attractive, they do look nice, but the application is even more, you know, more exciting to look at, right? So to be able to see how much this is being produced and how you're using it, it's phenomenal. I'm glad you brought up earlier about the EV charge of the Watt Pilot because that is absolutely beautiful and it's a great piece of tech. I love EVs as you know by the car in front of the other buildings today. But tell us about the Watt Pilot. Well, the Watt Pilot also is something pretty special that we have. So we actually have two versions. So let's say you have a holiday house or you're traveling, we have one that you can carry with you and one you can have fixed on the wall. So I'm a big fan of the one that you can carry and if we look at the market, a lot of people are also going for the, for the one that you can carry. We know that with the whole transition to EVs, we need to also simplify it. So our charger, if you want to have the app, you want to control it on the app, you can do this. You can do this. And if you want, let's say, to have like a standard charger, you just press it, control it using a button, you also have this. One of my actually favorite feature of this of this what uh, pilot is the LEDs on the on, on the front of the unit, where you can change the color. I noticed it's a small thing, but if you want a party in your garage, you can actually change the, the color. 
couldn't. Oh, I can imagine you parking in your garage. That's what, I, that's what I do. I'm partying just by myself with my car there. Absolutely fantastic. And look, you know, really, what has Frontage got coming up? I mean, before we get into what Frontage has got coming up, I mean, one thing I absolutely love, and the one thing a lot of our consumers are concerned about, is what happens at end of life. You know, because really, you know, with panels themselves, until now, people who've had solar panels now for 15, 16 years, although they're probably not working as well as they should do, won't remove them because they don't want them to go to landfill. And that's a big bone of contention. You guys have overcome that, haven't you, inside of the design and the process you've gone through for life cycle analysis? Yes, so actually it all started where uh, at the start of the, the, com the company says so it is one of our values. So maybe I'll show you with this particular inverter which we released I think maybe like around 10 years ago. And we already thought about this long time ago. And one of the concepts is the service side of things. We, if ever something goes wrong with your unit, we take it back and it goes into a repair pool. And we make sure that all the components that we can reuse is basically back in, in our own pool. So it's the same thing with the new Gen 24. Because Behind this, there's a heat sink which is made of 100% aluminium. And guess how many cans do you need to recycle to make one of those? Uh, I have no idea. For quite a few. Well, you need actually around 324 cans. Wow. So it's made of 100% recycled aluminium, so it's a lot of cans that you need to. So you can actually have the sponsor buy Pepsi or Coca Cola. Well, if they want, <laughs> they know where to find us. You can recycle the cans 100%. Which is absolutely amazing. And to know that's actually possible with inverters is phenomenal, right? Yeah, it's, it's so good to know. And and tell me more about you know, your process. Obviously, you're a global company, but in Australia, I mean, everybody knows who you are. I mean, and that's a testament to your brand, but it's also the fact you can support you know, both consumers and solar power retailers once they've installed your product in case they ever need you. Yes, so basically, we have a, a, an office in Melbourne, but also an office in Perth. So we are covering the whole country. Uh, with us, we usually be, deal more with the installer who then provide the service to the end retailer. But for us, you know, we have a lot of easy way of communicate, communication via emails, via our apps. So we're here to, to service the market. Yeah. Fantastic. And look, Seb, I know you probably should tell me, and there's no cameras filming right now. What's coming up? You know, what's next for Fronis? Well, uh, in the next couple of months, there will be one of the biggest, I think, announcements for us. So we'll bring our bigger inverter, single phase inverter. Since I think I've joined Fronius, everyone has been asking for it, so it's finally uh, here. So I think we, I think everyone should look out for the bigger 8 and 10 single phase Gen 24, which we call the Primal Gen 24. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. I know that's going to make a lot of people very, very happy, especially myself. And I'm about to rent make my first time, and I certainly want to get solar power on that roof. So uh, I'll give you a call. Give me a call, and we, we make something happen. I said it was great to see you, Seb. Thanks. All the best, mate. Thank you.